Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Jack and the focus of this channel is on helping you live a healthier, happier, and wiser life through knowledge while wearing interesting t-shirts. And if you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And as always, an early like is really appreciated to push this video out on the YouTube algorithm to more people to watch. And just so you all know, lately I've been doing quite a few CBD videos and there's a whole list on a whiteboard that I have that of various topics of videos that I want to put out that I've been researching. But I've been doing quite a few CBD videos lately because there've just been quite a bit of research that's been coming out lately. And so I figured I'd make videos and get out to you guys as soon as I can while it's hot off the press. And for today's video, the focus will be on looking at does CBD actually cause liver damage? And this is sort of a question I get asked a lot in my clinic by a lot of patients um, that are hesitant to start trying cannabinoids for various health and wellness reasons and one that has a lot of misconceptions. And uh, we'll kind of start off by talking about why this is even a topic, talk about the research study that kind of brought this to light along with various articles in the media that kind of propagated this and what the latest research has shown. And so stay tuned, let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so before we dive into the details of the most recent research that came out and what spurred this video, I want to kind of take you back and discuss why CBD and liver damage uh, sort of became a hot button topic basically. And it started when there was a Forbes magazine put out by Mike Adams. And in this article, he basically brings to light this research study that was conducted by Laura Ewing and company. And in this um, article that was released, they looked at whether or not CBD causes liver damage if you were to give it to mice in substantial dosages. Now, for those of you that are interested, please feel free to go and check out any of these links. Um, I'll put them all down below in the description and please read up on them if you're interested. But essentially in this study, what they ended up doing was giving mice significant dosages of CBD. And we're talking about in the range of 246 milligrams per kilogram and all the way up to 2,460 milligrams per kilogram. And you know, they would do things like give constant dosing of up to 615 milligrams per kilogram. And I don't need to tell you that you know, if you're transferring that over to human beings and you know, you take an average 70 kilogram person, well, I mean, multiply 70 by 615. And I mean, that's a significant amount of CBD to take per day. Uh, you know, not only is it really not doable, but it's also extremely expensive in that if you're purchasing a high quality CBD product and uh, you know, it's appropriately lab tested and then it is pretty expensive. And so it is cost prohibitive to take that amount. And I don't know of anyone that is able to take that amount. They basically justify it based off of something called allometric scaling. This is basically sort of a way of converting uh, or taking various sort of metabolic and genetic differences between mice and humans and transferring it over to humans to convert it into dosing. I won't get into the details of it. If you're really interested, what I really suggest checking out is Project CBD's essentially uh, their rebuttal to this Forbes article as well as the actual study. Uh, if you're going to read any one link, that is the one link I would suggest going and checking out. They do a fantastic job, this Adrian Devitt Lee, of basically um, dissecting out the study as well as what the article discusses and um, laying out how poorly done all of it was as well as the biases that were throughout. But to Forbes credit, they actually did a follow-up article. Actually, they brought on Project CBD's uh, Adrian Devitt Lee and they actually did a sort of a question and answer. And again, the link will be down below. I suggest checking it out, but uh, it's a really good interview. But if you really want to see it sort of be broken down, go to Project CBD, the Project CBD link um, to sort of get the details. I would say that one good thing that did come out of uh, that article by Mr. Adams is that he does bring to light the lack of education with in the medical space in regards to cannabis. And this led me to a research study at Stanford University School of Medicine that found that 85% of medical professionals have absolutely no education or training when it comes to cannabis. 
And they also found that 80% of physicians don't even realize that marijuana is still considered a schedule one substance. 40% of physicians actually think that marijuana is a drug that has already received FDA approval, which obviously it has not. And so this yet again, just kind of points towards what I've mentioned in various other videos about the lack of education in the medical space in regards to the endocannabinoid system, things like the entourage effect, details of the cannabis plant, discussing terpenes, cannabinoids, and all the various intricacies I've laid out in previous videos. Uh, please feel free to check those out if you're so interested. Another detail in that study done by Laura Ewing um, at the University of Arkansas in Little Rock was that they looked at where they got the CBD and how they extracted the CBD, and they did hexane extract. And this was supplied by the National Institute of Drug Abuse. And if you look into hexane, it is actually a neurotoxin. And they state that they use less than 5,000 micrograms per gram of hexane. And just so you guys know, in the state of California, which has significant rules and regulations in regards to how cannabis is grown and manufactured, they only allow 290 micrograms per gram of hexane in the cannabis extract. And it is because of the known toxicity of hexane um, itself. I do also want to mention that there have been studies to show that high doses of CBD, anywhere from 20 to 50 milligrams per kilogram, can actually elevate liver enzymes. And this was mainly done because of Epidiolex, which is the FDA approved seizure drug that is a CBD isolate essentially that's created by um, the pharmaceutical industry. And the dosage there, the cap is at 20 milligrams per kilogram. And in regards to essentially interfering with various other drug metabolisms, you're talking about an enzyme called the cytochrome P450, which I've covered in previous videos. Um, its inhibition is not seen until you're taking hundreds and closer to thousands um, of CBD milligram per day. And so without further ado, let's jump into the main research that was just released. And this was on March 22nd of 2021. And this is done by Valid Care. They are a really interesting company in that they basically decentralize clinical trials and research and bring various studies to publication uh, much sooner through this sort of more efficient process. What they were trying to do was basically answer the FDA's repeated requests, including the agency's March 5th, 2020 report to Congress for science-based data so that it can confidently determine the appropriate regulatory path for hemp-derived CBD products. Congressional leadership actually asked Valid Care uh, nearly 18 months ago to engage the industry in helping to collect the safety data for the FDA so that they can figure out how to go about proceeding with putting out sort of guidelines or statements or regulations within the cannabinoid space and specifically to CBD. And so this is their preliminary report that was just released. In this study, they had 839 participants from August 2020 to February of 2021. And it reads, Quote, preliminary findings show no evidence of liver disease in all participants and no increase in prevalence of elevated liver function tests when compared to a population with a similar incidence of medical conditions. And they basically took the blood samples and measured various liver enzymes to see if they were elevated. And they found that three participants did have three times the normal levels of ALT, which is one of those enzymes. However, all three of them were on medications known to cause elevated liver enzymes. And 70% of participants were on various medications and actually reported no adverse events. What's interesting is that studies of similar populations showed 11% elevation in liver function enzymes, but within this particular research population, it only showed 9%. So they were testing to see if CBD would cause elevated liver enzyme, but if you actually compare this population, uh, the study population to the normal population, they actually show decreased liver enzymes. And if you understand the endocannabinoid system and how it ties into inflammation and essentially every other system in your body, this really should not surprise people that have that type of understanding. So other notable things worth mentioning from the study was that they had 12 reputable CBD companies basically providing funding, the products, as well as the certificates of analysis and helping with recruitment. And the CBD they used was derived from hemp, or it's less than 0.3% THC. 
and for and these individuals had to be taking it for at least 60 days. The participants used anything from full spectrum to broad spectrum to isolate and if that sounds like a foreign language to you then please be sure to check out my previous video basically breaking that down and discussing the details. I'll link that above and below as well. So just to sort of wrap all of this up I want to talk about my experiences clinically in my patient population in regards to CBD and as I mentioned before in my CBD safety video at that time when I recorded it six months ago or so um, it still holds true in that I have been suggesting CBD to pretty much all my patients and I have not seen clinically any relevance in regards to causing any type of liver issue nor interference with any drugs and not at these dosages. Now, you know, again, if you're taking hundreds of milligrams a day or thousands of milligrams a day of CBD, uh, number one, that's very expensive, right? If you're taking a high quality CBD product, um, you know, it's not cheap. Uh, just CBD in general, uh, whether it's full spectrum, broad spectrum, or isolate, um, it's just not cheap. But if you're taking that amount of CBD a day, uh, there have been some studies to show that you can actually develop those issues. However, as always, I do want to say just as a disclaimer that these videos are for entertainment purposes and educational purposes only. So if you have any questions, be sure to speak it over your clinician and hope that they are, you know, well versed and well educated about this topic. And I also hope that you guys see how historically this has just become such a big topic overall. And it was sort of based off of some misinformation, right? And sort of propagation of it. I mean, I have read, you know, articles all the way from reputable Stanford, you know, doctors that have put out these articles in various journals and things, sort of saying these same things. But again, it's obvious that they just read this somewhere, but didn't kind of take a deeper dive in regards to, okay, well, what did the data show? What did the study show? And how did they arrive at this conclusion? Was it bias? And, you know, was it really a well done scientific study. You know, as always, be sure and do your own research. Um, and if you found this video valuable, a like is always appreciated and feel free to share the videos with anyone else that you think might found this content um, informative. And so until next time, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye. Pura Vida.